The wailing sound of an inconsolable mother who stands over the grave of her son who has gone down in broad daylight in the streets of Westbury, south of Johannesburg. Ivan Sevenero Oaks, an aspiring football coach, was shot and killed in November last year, just three days before his 29th birthday. He died weeks after returning from Scotland, where he completed his pro-licensed football coaching course one that would see him reach his dream of becoming an international football coach. Evans is one of many youths who have lost their lives in the senseless killings in Westbury, where gang turf wars are the order of the day. The war is said to be between the Varados and the Fascans. The fight against drug territory, according to locals, has led to the death of sometimes innocent people. Some say children are avenging their parents' deaths also killing those who are associated with their enemies. On August 1st, 18-year-old Leolin van Weyck, affectionately known as Lolly, was shot and killed while walking back home from a local tuck shop, which is believed to be in the Varadol territory. Her mother, Dorothy, said her child lived in fear of being killed after rumors went around that she was on a hit list. Three months before her death, Lolly stopped going to school she told her mother that she had been receiving threatening messages on her phone. When the school opened, Lolly didn't go to school. In the morning, Lolly was staying up, she would get dressed, everything. But then she just walked out of our church and then she would come back. Lolly, what's wrong? No, ma, there's two boys standing there. They're watching me. So when me and my daughter went out to see who's the two boys, there was no one. So I called the principal. I told the principal to I have a problem. The old one is scared to come to school. She don't want to talk with me. Later that evening, Lolly was sent to the shop to buy her mother some pain pills. Minutes later, gunshots were heard. And I was sat, I was sat, I had the gunshot. And I told Ovas, I told Ovas, Ovas, do you heard a gunshot here outside? No, ma, I didn't hear. I said, I did so loud, the gunshot. At the time, it was slowly, they didn't shoot. She was on her way home and they shot her from the back. Ah, this is really so because I lost my daughter. She was still young. Before she died, she told my eldest daughter the names of the two boys. This is the second child Dorothy has lost to gang violence. In 2020, her son, McAllister, was also shot and killed allegedly by gang members. His murderers were caught, but Dorothy questions why until now, Loli's killers have not been arrested. And I asked myself, what did Loli do wrong? Did he came to get to her? And I asked myself, did Loli do something wrong because she don't walk with the gun up and down? She just hates people because they killed my son. And she told me she hated him because my son was in the games. They was this child every day and people in the community know it. He was a good person. He was a good person. Make you lose know, his name. He was always for this son. Fear lingers in this community as mothers worry about their children's safety and warn them against going to shops across the territorial divide out of fear that they will be killed. Locals say children as young as 14 carry guns in the open as if they are carrying toys. The gang territories are said to be separated by Kretschmer Street, with the east side belonging to the Varados and the west to the Fuscans, 
but some areas have a combination of gang members as neighbors, which heightens the tension and rivalry. As mothers, we are so stressed and worried. We don't give those children the guns. You see all the shops are standing here, people does not even go to shop, there's no finances for shops. Those acha will get rotten there because it will stand for four months. This, this Buddha is going to close the shop, he doesn't make any money here. People then can't even go to buy shops, they ask of each other here, hey, can't you give me meal meal here, give me oil there. Listen, you can have a potato there, you can have a tomato there. And this is what our children are seeing, our youth, our boys, how will they supply food into their houses for their mothers? They're not able to work for us. Those children are crying for help actually in this situation. So it's been just taken advantage. The real gangsters take advantage to shoot and shoot and shoot. Some of them walk with the guns just like that. In the middle of the street? Yeah, in the Can day. come down here? Yeah. In the day. Open. And you know what? I see they have a new thing where, where it's just load shedding when they start shooting. Who you want to know um, who you shoot? Locals also say children are no longer going to school and instead roam the streets. On a school day, children are seen gambling and others walking about the streets, visibly carrying weapons. What is that for? What is that for? Banking school also appears to be a norm. Police Minister Peggy Kale visited the area after a string of shootings left three people dead and ten injured in vengeance shootings in February. These came after a gang leader belonging to the Varados was shot and killed, sending violent waves through the community. Kale promised the community stringent interventions that would deal with the out-of-control gang violence. There are people that have moved from Cape Town uh, to, to create the new fifth domes here to create the new chaos. Maybe it is on that score that uh, the game, we must up our game as a police uh, to make sure that whether you come from Cape Town or any other part of South Africa to be here, we need to deal with those, we need to deal with those matters. But Zainuddin Ali, whose brother Shahabudan was shot outside the neighbor's house along Oliander Place in February, says the shooting in the area have worsened since. On the same day as Shahabudan was shot, residents heard gunshots along the same street. Here, Crescendo Otto, a 32-year-old man, was also killed. All this just a few meters next to Miona's daycare center, which looks after children as young as three. He was just going there to go ever since he passed away was shooting in the street it just became more and more. Yeah, day before yesterday, Monday, mm -hmm. no, Monday, Sunday night, they were shooting in the passage. Three people got shot. Another guy from the top, I think his name is Kurt or something, a girl, and then another guy from around the corner, yeah. Locals say they've lost trust in the police, whom they've accused of being involved or sometimes turning a blind eye on the gangsterism. In September, a police officer attached to the anti-gang unit was gunned down while investigating a murder in the area. Religious leaders say they feel helpless as their attempts to preach peace have fallen on deaf ears. While some people had an appetite to speak to us, many were too scared to speak to us on camera, asking that we conceal their identities out of fear of being targeted. The community cannot function in fear. Because right now, fear has been instilled to a lot of men and women. When we talk about fear, you hear a gunshot going off. You ask yourself, who is that man in short? When the 
when it gets dark, a lot of people don't even want to be in the street. With us load sharing that is taking place, why can't they switch the lights off during the day and leave the lights on at night? Because at night it is where the devil is roaming. Even the eyewitnesses are taken out. That is fear already. Can I speak out? No, I'm too afraid because I will be targeted next. Can I speak out that I saw them shooting? No, I cannot because my family will also lose me. Can I speak out because I saw seven guys coming down with the firearms and that guy was standing by the corner and they shot him dead. No, I cannot because I will be targeted. I will be the next person. Three people per week. Sometimes it's five. Now if you have to think about it, why so many people in a week to be buried in one day because of a shooting? It's heartbreaking. And while the situation is dire in the area, some say only divine intervention can save the people of Westbury. The situation is bad. Because of, because of a gang terrorism. People dying, people stopping. Lot of shootings. Our lives in danger, but what can we do? That's why I'm dangerous I made it my thing to pray in the morning after the Not for myself, but it for our community, you see. The things come right. But as, as we know, God answers our prayers. Things will come right. I know things will come right.